journeying through Lent on this April rainy shower Sunday. But Holy Week is upon us, friends. Palm Sunday is next Sunday already. And our choir will be doing a gorgeous piece called Seven Last Words, which will take us through the seven last words of Christ so that we might be ready for Easter Sunday and Resurrection Day. So I hope to see you next Sunday. We do have these wonderful invitations. If you have friends who are music lovers who, who don't often go to church but might love to participate, you can uh, take one of our invitations. And then on the flip side is an invite to Easter and the Easter egg hunt, which is afterwards. Now, as you know, if you've been here for a while, there have been years we've had uh, 200 kids and years we've had, you know, 30 kids. We really don't, and with the pandemic, we really don't know what it's gonna be. So we're gonna stuff a bunch of eggs and just be ready. So Alex, I'm like, put the tables in the lobby so they have to walk by the table to get out of here. So <laughs> come and stuff some eggs today so that we will be ready for next Sunday. Alex is gonna have a team to hide them and be ready for the children. Hopefully it won't snow. So yeah, stuff some eggs today with us. And those are the biggies. Oh, you know what? We are going to do bring a cake for Easter so that while the kids are hunting for sugar, we can all have some sugar too. Uh, so if you would like to bring a cake to share, I think we'll make some coffee for Easter and have a chance to just mingle and watch the children hunt for their eggs next Sunday. There's a Bright Pink sign up for cake out in our lobby. Is there anything else going on? Uh, I need, uh, so, you know the egg cartons that we've been donating? Yeah, egg cartons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, to hit our count, I need eight more egg cartons. So if you have any, uh, keep, keep bringing them if you want to. Okay, we do need egg cartons. So just the dozen, not the, you know, two dozen. Because then some kid would walk away with just a lot of eggs. Yeah, we don't want that. Well, friends, I think that's good for today. Why don't we stand and greet each other as we pass the, pe oh, CJ, yeah, I see that hand. What's up, CJ? You have um, tell them about picking up lunch. Oh, lunches. Okay. Just a reminder: we have a nice write-up about lunches with CJ, and he loves those. So keep that in mind. Now you can stand and pass the peace of Christ. all for your greeting. If you would like to remain standing and turn to your order of worship, let's join together in our call. God set a rainbow in the skies as a reminder of God's steadfast love. God's love endures forever. God has promised to measure justice with grace. Grant us grace to believe in your goodness. The Lord is King. 
The Lord is judge. The Lord is good. God's faithful love endures forever. Come, let us worship the Lord. God's faithful love endures forever. <laughs> covenant. Uh, if you would like to join me in our Lenten prayer for today, it'll be on the front page of your bulletin. And uh, let's go ahead and read these words together, followed by a silent uh, prayer. Loving God, we are reminded that Jesus offered prayers for God's people. So do we. With cries and petitions, we call out to you in the midst of our hurting, in the agony of our pain, we reach for you. In the turmoil of our brokenness, we plead for your healing touch. Save us, God. Save us from death, illness, pain, depression, economic oppression, racial iniquity, fear, loneliness, violence, and hate. We accept your grace and providential care for us in every area of life and cling to your assurance and love and acceptance. Now, men, the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because of his great love, we are free from sin and can live fully forgiven lives. Thanks be to God.
screen down and put the Matthew 7 scripture up. So our sermon series, we're in, we're in Lent, it's 40 days of love, we're talking about how to love each other through the way we communicate, uh, and here's what we know, actions speak louder than words, right? We show love through our actions, but sometimes the most loving behavior is to stop doing something. And that is our scripture for today. Are we ready for Matthew 7? Oh, it's up there. Awesome. So here's Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount and the behavior we need to stop in order to be loving. Do not judge, Jesus says, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, here, let me, let me get the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Interesting, he said these words in the very first century, because couldn't they be written to us today? It is so easy to judge other people. For some of us, as easy as breathing, right? Passing judgment on others is very much a part of American culture. We were just kind of raised that way. Pick a reality show, you know, Back when a lot of us were growing up, it was sitcoms that were the big thing on, on TV. Well, that's been replaced with reality shows. Does anybody watch anything remotely reality? Yeah, some of us do. Uh, my kids watch The Bachelor, so sometimes I get sucked in. Show totally based on judging, right? Okay, does anybody watch any of the Housewives shows? The Housewives of Atlanta, they now got Salt Lake City. Oh, I can't watch them. Because it's the judgy thing, right? The fighting, the judgment. I'm like, this, this stuff is embedded into our culture. Even Disney judges its viewers. So let's put up the, just the Encanto, the first Encanto slide. Their latest animated show with music and lyrics written by Lin-Manuel Miranda is Encanto. It's fabulous. It's a story of three sisters, and the lead, let's put up Mirabelle. Mirabelle is the main character. She, we see the, the story from her perspective. As you can see, she's loaded with personality. She's kind of funny and a little goofy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the main character. The second character is Isabel, the older sister, and Isabel is probably most, uh, the most Disney princess-like. She's got the long, beautiful hair. She's gorgeous. You know, she's married to the town hunk, uh, engaged to the town hunk, and everything she touches turns to flowers. There's Isabella. The third sister is Louisa. Louisa has been gifted with strength. And so she's large. She's very powerful. She has these massive muscles. In the whole movie, she's like carrying donkeys around and literally moving the town church kind of a thing. Louisa's song is so, well, I'm sorry, choir. I've got slides if you want to go see the Encanto sisters. Please forgive me for not alerting you to that. Um, when making merchandise, guess which sister Disney made the most merch for? I'll give you a hint. Isabella, right? because she is the most classically like a Disney princess, the beautiful, the hair, the flowers. So when they made their merch, they made a ton of Isabella stuff, followed by the lead character, followed by Mirabelle stuff, and just not a lot of Louisa stuff, because what, what little girl's gonna want a big muscly Louisa stuff? Well, Disney made a big mistake because Guess what merchandise has been flying off the shelves? Louisa. 
They can't keep up with Louisa's stuff. And parents have been tweeting about this. My daughter just asked for a Louisa-themed birthday party, and literally everything in Kanto has Mirabelle or Isabel's face on it. Disney needs to step it up with Louisa merch. And another mom said this. Apparently, Louisa merch is outselling Isabella merch by a significant factor. Turns out, children relate harder to women who are strong, honest, flawed, and interesting than those who are just seen as beautiful. Go figure. <clears throat> so Louisa's song, it, it took my breath away. I, I was watching it with my kids, and I thought, I can't believe this song is in a Disney show, because the lyrics are... Everyone relies on Louisa, right? And she sings, under the surface, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless. And she sings about the pressure, the pressure on her, pressure like a drip, drip, drip that will never stop. Pressure like a tick, tick, tick that's about to blow. If I could shake the crushing weight of expectations, would that free up some room for joy? This character that is not beautiful, she's strong and she's flawed and she's honest and she sings this powerful truth. And guess what little girls are relating to? They're relating to Louisa. So Disney judged their audience. They thought they knew what little girls want and relate to, right? They were completely wrong. You know, the other thing that happened this week was at the Oscars. Let's show the slap. Did anybody watch this live? Yeah. I was watching it live, um, and like probably you, I thought my, I rewound it. I thought, well, my cable, my streaming service has glitched. And, you know, and then I read Will Smith's lips, like the third time through, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, he's swearing at Chris Rock. So if, if you, you know, if you've been living in a cave and don't know what happened, um, sorry, that's less slight to those of you who are on social media. So Will Smith, Chris Rock, hosting the Oscars, made a joke about um, Will Smith's wife, who is Jada. Jada. Thank you. You know, this happens. Um, Jada has alopecia, which is hair loss, and so has been shaving her head. Um, and Chris Rock make, made a G.I. Jane joke. He kind of said, hey, can't wait to see G.I. Jane. So we don't, what we don't know, does Chris Rock know she had alopecia? Why did he make that joke? The joke was not in great taste, you know. And Will Smith uh, just lost it. He walked up on stage, did a full face slap to Chris Rock. And it, it took a minute for viewers, and I think the audience, to figure out, is this really happening? Was this stage? What's going on? But I will tell you, my first thought was, something's up with Will Smith. You know, something is going on inside of him. He's, you know, he is a brilliant, respected, acclaimed actor, and he had a bad moment. He made a big mistake, and I thought, pastorally, I think pastorally, I'm like, dude, you know, he needs someone to love him and help him figure out what's going on. But now Will Smith is facing the judgment literally of the world. The global community saw this mistake and now he's on this microscope of judgment with people, you know, bashing his with behavior, some coming out with understanding. Why do we judge? We do not know what Will Smith is carrying around inside of himself. He grew up uh, in an angry alcoholic home. You know, war broke last year that his wife had been having an affair with some hot young musician. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. He might have just been poised to lose it, and that was just the last straw. We don't know. Why do we judge? It's so easy to do just in everyday life, right? It's kind of fun to dish. Does it make us feel better about ourselves? I think so. We feel a little more superior when we see somebody else's flaws, talk about them. Have you ever been judged? Sometimes I get wind of things people say about me, and honestly, when you're, you know, I'm not a super big public figure, but I'm kind of, you know, a little bit in the public eye as a pastor. You know what? I've learned you just gotta, I 
just like, you know, people are going to, I can't control what people think about me. I don't know who I am. I just got to let it go. I think I'm a pretty nice, kind person if somebody thinks otherwise, right? But how many of us carry wounds from our childhood, from the judgmental words of a parent or a teacher or a peer? Kids can be so mean. We carry that with us sometimes our whole lives. And I will tell you what, if you're kind of summing up another person, you know, the way they look or talk or act, appearance, they don't need you to tell them. They already know. Because each one of us has some Louisa in us. You know, what was that lyric? Under the surface, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless. People feel that way. They feel the pressure. It's ticking like a bomb. If I could shake this weight of expectation, maybe there'd be some room for joy. People don't need us to judge them because I'm pretty sure we judge ourselves more harshly than anybody else ever could. And so Jesus says, please don't judge. And then he kind of lets us have it. Don't judge because you're going to be judged. <laughs> Our call to worship, like God is the judge, right? We're not the judge. God is the judge. Don't judge. For with the judgment you make, you'll be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Don't dish it out if you can't take it, Jesus says. Then he says, why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye and don't notice the log in your own? The, the words have the same root, speck and log. Could mean a sawdust or splinter or a log or plank. And it's kind of cool when we think that Jesus is a carpenter. He's kind of using some carpenter lingo here. We, we have to be responsible for ourselves. We're not responsible for everybody else. That's what he's saying. Handle your own stuff. Take care of your, log, your own logs. Don't worry about everybody else's sawdust. Don't presume you really know what's happening in another person's life. Examine your own faults first. Then maybe you will be able to have compassion on others. He's not saying don't be discerning. Uh, we know the difference, right? Judging another person and knowing right from wrong are two different things. Of course we need to call out wrongness. It's okay to say Will Smith made a mistake, but it's a whole other thing to judge him as a person for it. Jesus says examine your own faults first. But I want to show you the other version of this passage. So Matthew has the don't judge, the log in your eye. Luke has a slightly different version. And I have to say, I kind of like Luke's versions better. Luke says, has Jesus say, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. And then Luke starts to turn this around into a really positive, uplifting thing. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Matthew's version feels really punitive. Like, you hypocrites, Jesus even says, you hypocrites! Get that log out of your eye. But Luke just has a different... And you know, these books were written a couple decades probably after Jesus had already died and rose again. So we're getting stories that have been told and finally written down. We've got different versions of them, and that's, that's what happens in the Gospels. So Luke's version is a little different. Maybe Luke combines some different teachings together to make this beautiful piece. But look at how he turns it around. Don't judge, and you will not be judged. Don't condemn, and you will not be condemned. But then the finger changes, right? This finger to more of an open hand. Forgive. Instead of judging, forgive. 
and you will be forgiven. And then actually give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, running over will be put into your lap. The measure you give will be the measure you get back. So Luke actually replaces the negative action, judging, with the positive actions, giving and forgiving, with the promise of blessing. If you live this way, if you live generously and with forgiveness and don't judge others, guess what you're going to get back? That's what you're going to get back. It's going to run, your life is going to be filled with goodness because goodness is what you are putting out into the world. The measure you give will all come back to you right in your lap. How should we live then? Generously. Forgiving others. Not judging Recognizing so many people feel just like Louisa. And they don't need us to judge them. They need us to love and understand them. And we need to tend to ourselves. Lent, it's built into Lent, this idea of self-examination. This is a time for us to ready ourselves for the gift of Christ on the cross introspect. So instead of outwardly judging, really we should be inwardly judging, although I don't like the way that feels, but that's what Lent is for. What, what's the log? What are the logs in my life? What do I need to stop so that I can do these other things? What do I need to stop doing so that I can forgive and give and love? Will you pray with me? Lord God, as we walk this road to Jerusalem together, help us be ready, God. Know our hearts. Help us do better with how we treat each other and see each other. Make us your people today and every day. Through Christ we pray. Amen. We invite you to please stand and sing with us.
receive, we receive our weekly offerings in the back of the church, but we always have a moment for you to tell God thank you as we listen to Linda play for us so wonderfully. Please count your blessings and think about what you can offer God this week. us in so many ways and so with this prayer God we offer you ourselves on this Lenten journey and the gifts we bring to say thank you through Christ Amen
Got a bunch of prayers today from Anne and Neil sitting right in the back aisle asking God's blessing as we start our 5,000 mile road trip to Charleston, Savannah, Lake Santa Fe, Florida to visit and fish with Jeff and Annalie Noble. Uh, <laughs> let's see, oh, New Bern, North Carolina, then the length of the Blue Ridge Parkway down to Asheville to see the Biltmore and then home. Wow. All right, friends, let's shine some hands on Ann and Neil. Lord God, bless this journey. May it fill them up with fun and joy. Give them safe journeys and a great time together. Amen. Amen. Thanks for sharing with us. Uh, from Chris Wigruder, who's right in front of them, please pray for my friend's daughter, Jenny, who has um, can cancer in her bones. Uh, oh gosh, progressed to her kidney and stomach, and the family needs prayers. Oh, and let, let's offer Chris our hands too. We're gonna pray with our hands today. Lord God, for Jenny and this rough diagnosis, we ask that your healing presence and power would be with her doing good and bringing healing and comfort to her whole family. Amen. And from Robbie right here in his Lenten purple. Oh, Robbie, this is now month 16 with long-term COVID symptoms. And every day is something different. I'm not here at church as often as I'd like, but I wanted to thank everyone for your prayers and support. All right, hands on Robbie Choir. Oh, Lord God, we love this wonderful man, and we truly implore your spirit, God, to work harder for his healing, to restore him completely from these symptoms he's facing, to bring energy and good health and wellness back to his life. Hear our prayers for Robbie, Lord. Amen. Thanks for sharing with us, Robbie. Uh, Bob Stevenson, over here. My sister continues a regimen of radiation therapy this week. Pray for her strength and endurance, and pray for Ukraine. Bob, healing hands for your sister. We pray that radiation will be effective on her in uh, keeping this cancer from coming back. We pray for her strength and endurance, and we pray for all in Ukraine, God, who are grieving the loss of life, family, homes, safety, that you will bring peace again. Have Russia back down, Lord God, hear our prayers. Amen. Linda and Gray have been here two weeks in a row. Can we pray for you guys? They just have a list of stuff going on health-wise, and it's just overwhelming sometimes. So if you're behind them, do you want to put some hands? Lord God, please take care of these two wonderful people. Be with them in their home and in their bodies, God, that you will be a healing force for them, helping them through every day ahead. Through Christ we pray, amen. And we've got the baby fast, because the baby is due any, any minute. And Josh's mom is here hiding him away. She's here uh, keeping vigil to help the baby when baby comes. Uh, so choir, let's get the hands on this woman. Lord, you said you would come like a thief in the night when you come back. And you know the babies kind of do that too. You know the time, and you know it's near, God. And so we pray for Jules and Josh as they wait, and for Heidi, too. We ask for a beautiful delivery, God, with no complications, and a wonderful, healthy baby. Walk with them in the days that lie ahead. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Let's continue in our prayers. God, thank you for receiving the prayers on our hearts today. And Lord, I want to lift up to you today anybody who feels like Louisa in Encanto, God, if anybody's not feeling their worth today, 
or if anyone is feeling the pressure of life today, anyone that needs some room for joy today, God, I ask your spirit to break through, to bring love and light and healing and goodness to all who need that today. We lift up to you our families and our loved ones, that you will take care of them. We offer you our world, God. We picture your strong hands holding our earth and ask for you to care for this earth in new ways that we have yet to see and experience. We trust you, Lord. And so we come to you with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we approach Holy Week next week, we remember the night Jesus sat down for that Passover meal with his dearest friends. He knew what the night and the next day held for him, and yet he shared this meal with them. And all who trust in him and believe in his name, we're invited to share it as well. As they sat down to that table, Jesus took the bread, and as he broke it, he gave thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and held it out and said, Drink whenever you drink in remembrance of me. Friends, as often as we eat this bread and to partake in this cup, we proclaim the saving death of Christ, until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. We continue to use individual cups just for all of our safety for communion. So you're invited to come down as you feel led down the side aisles and take a cup back to your seats, and then we will take it all together, the bread and the cup.
take off the as we take off the top layer let's partake in the body of Christ together and the second layer is the love of God poured out for us Lord God, we are filled with gratitude for your great love for us and your sacrifice for us. Help us to receive the gift you bring and to offer our whole selves, God, in response to that. Fill us with your spirit now as we prepare to go into your world to live in hope and love. Amen. Today, please remember always that wherever you are, God is with you. Wherever you go, it's God who sends you. Christ who dwells in you has something he wants you to do because of where you are. Remember this and go in God's grace and love and power. Amen. <laughs>